we're going to powers and roots of complex numbers and we'll use what is known as the Moivre's theorem. Note that we take the complex number z with modulus r and argument theta. Then the nth power of z is equal to the nth power of r cis n theta. So n multiplies theta but goes to the power of r. So as we know cis n theta means cos n theta plus j sin n theta based on Euler's formula. Then this means that even if the power is negative n then that means the power of r will be a negative n and negative n will multiply theta which is the argument and I'm hoping that we still remember that cos of negative theta is cos theta because it's in the fourth quadrant and sine of negative theta is negative sine theta hence cos of negative n theta is positive cos n theta and sine of negative n theta is negative sine n theta. I'm hoping that we all remember this based on the cast rule. Then in order for us to be able to find roots of a complex number z equal to x plus jy then it means that if we are looking for the nth root of z then we'll have n roots as well. Note that k starts from 0 to n minus 1 and the general formula that we use is zk equal to r to the power 1 over n which is the nth root cis the reference angle which you will get from your calculator based on the quadrant where your complex number will be drawn plus 360 times k degrees all of this is divided by n note k starts from 0 to n minus 1 so if you've got the cube root for instance of z that means you'll have three roots k starting from 0 to 2 and you substitute the value of k in there and you'll have 3 for n. I'm hoping that we'll be able to make some examples, do some examples and be able to get this right. Note that for nth root of a complex number you'll have n roots starting from 0 to n minus 1. Let's do some examples based on the powers as well as roots. We'll start with number one. We've got the fifth power of one minus j. So the first thing we do is to change to polar form our complex number and I'm hoping that we'll be able to confirm that r is the square root of two and your calculator will give you negative 45 degrees which so is correct it's in the fourth quadrant because x is positive and y is negative. That means the correct quadrant that has been given to us by the calculator. Then the power, right? The fifth power of 1 minus j will be the fifth power of the square root of 2. Cis 5 times the argument. I'm hoping you still remember that r is raised to the same power as n and n multiplies theta. Now we go again for the seventh power of minus 3 plus j4. Note that x is negative and y is positive so that's supposed to be in the second quadrant. Please always check whether your calculator gives you the answer in the correct quadrant. So you must be able to draw your 
complex number. Just remember that a complex number is x plus j y. So x here is negative 3 and y is 4. y is positive and you have x equal to negative 3. And then when you do that, you'll get 5, 6, 126.87 degrees. And then you raise it to the power 7. So that means r will be to the power 7. And 7 multiplies the angle. And I'm hoping that we got that right. More examples. Number two, we now asked to solve. So when you ask to solve, it means you are looking for roots. When I asked to solve, you are looking for roots. So you've got here z squared minus in brackets 2 root 3 plus j2 equal to 0. So first things first, take 2 root 3 plus j2 to the right hand side so that we realize that we are looking for the square root of that complex number. So we take the complex number itself, 2 root 3 plus j2, and we write it in polar form to make life easy for us because we need r and we also need um, the reference angle, which is theta. Both x and y are positive, so that means we are in the first quadrant. So our reference angle 30 degrees is in the correct quadrant. And I'm hoping you still remember how to find r, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we got 4 in our case. And now we write the formula, the general formula to find the roots of a given complex number. Note that for the values of k, you are going to start from 0 to 1. Remember, it was the square root because it was z squared there. So we'll have two roots, 0 and for k equal to 0 and k equal to 1. And our n here is 2 because the highest power of z was 2. And then note that r is to the power 1 over n. Now what we need to do, let's make the substitution. So you start with k equal to 0. So we'll have z0 equal to 4 to the power 1 over n. And our n is 2, which is power 4 to the power 1 over 2. The angle is the reference angle, which is 30 degrees, plus 360 times k. I'm hoping you're noticing that. That's in degrees. All divided by 2, which was the highest power of z. And then we simplify, and we're getting 2. 15 degrees. Now we have to go to k equal to 1. Again, we go to this formula. Substitute k for 1. So you'll have z1. And r will not change because it's still r to power 1 over n. So it's 4 to power half. And the angle is 30 degrees plus 360 times 1. Now the value for k has changed. It's 1. And our n still remains 2. Simplify, and we get in 2, 6, 1, 9, 5 degrees. I'm hoping that we are confident in this. Note that first things first, write the general formula in, that is used to calculate the roots and specify the values of k you are going to substitute. Remember, we start from 0 to n minus 1. So our n in this case is 2. So n minus 1 is 1. So that means we'll have k equal to 0 and k equal to 1. And we substitute in there so that you get the roots. Let's go to b. Now we've got z to the power 5 minus 1 equal to 0. Now we have z to the power 5 equal to 1, right? And please remember, 1 is on the positive x-axis or positive real axis, right on it, because the value for y is 0 
and x is 1. So that means we have 0 degrees. It's in the direction of 0 degrees. So that's why we have 1 cis 0 degrees. So our reference angle is 0. Now we write the formula. Note our formula must be specific on the values of k you are going to substitute. You have z to the power 5 there. So it means you will have k starting from 0 to 5 minus 1, which is 4, so that you have 5 roots in general. So now let's start k equal to 0. We substitute into the formula. Our r is 1. Remember, it will be 1 to the power 1 over 5. Our angle, we have 0 plus 360 times k equal to 0, all divided by 5. So the first root is 1, so it's 0 degrees. When k is equal to 1, we substitute again. You'll have z1, this side, and the value for k that multiplies 360 is 1. So you'll have 360 divided by 5. That gives you 72 degrees because the reference angle is 0. k equal to 2 will give you z2. And the only thing that changes will is the angle r does not change. So we'll have 360 times 2 divided by 5, which gives you 144 degrees. And then k equal to 3, we'll have 360 times 3 divided by 5, which gives you 216 degrees. And then again, k equal to 4, it's 360 times 4 divided by 5, which gives us 288. So what is important here is to get the formula right. The value for n is the power of z. And the values for k, they always start from 0 to n minus 1. Now do these exercises where you're supposed to solve. Note now these ones are for roots. These ones are for roots. So that means for number 1, we have z to power 6. So that means k starts from 0 to 5. We have number 2, z cubed. That means z k starts from 0 to 2. z to power 4, k starts from 0 to 3. Now you've been asked yet the cube root. So that means k starts from 0 to 2. Please attempt them and see whether you can be able to use that formula appropriately and also writing the given complex number in polar form. Then we go to the exponential form of a complex number. Note that we are able to change from the polar form to the exponential form. But now note that theta for the exponential form must be in radians. e to the power j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sine theta. So there is no um, change there. So we move from rectangular form to polar form to exponential form. Note that the polar form takes any format of the angle. It can be in radians or it can be in degrees, but the complex form theta must always be in radians. So let's do some examples. We've been asked to write in exponential form. So whatever we do, the power of E must be in radians. So here I've been given in a, a rectangular format. So the easiest way is to change it to polar form. Find r because that's what we need for the exponential form. We need r. r we know is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Theta we know. How to find theta is arctan of y over x. So we got negative 67.55 degrees. First things first, you check. Is it the correct quadrant? X is positive. 
y is negative definitely it's the correct quadrant it's the fourth quadrant and then you multiply that okay, by pi divided by 180 to change it to radians you cannot put degrees as the power of e in exponential form change it to radians that means it's a degrees multiplied by pi divided by 180 b now this one is already in polar form all we need to do is to change the angle to radians please check whether we got everything right and then now we're moving backwards from exponential form to polar and rectangular forms now here we have an exponential form or of a complex number squared what you could do here is to change it to polar form first you can do that and then use the powers of roots as we have introduced them in polar form and then continue but still it works the same way for the exponential form you square r and you multiply the angle by 2 even in exponential form so that's what we did here we squared r and multiplied the angle by 2 got the answer correctly and then what i did was to change it to degrees expressing it in polar form and then thereafter remembering that cis 140.83 degrees represents cos of 140.83 plus j sine 140.83 and then you use a calculator to multiply out and see whether we got everything right remember 140 is in the second quadrant so it means cos will definitely be negative you need to always check that so the value for cos will be negative and the value for sine will be positive because sine is the coefficient of j and cos is the real part so please remember whatever angle you get always remember when you're moving from polar to rectangular form be mindful of the quadrant as well b what i did was to change 4.80 to degrees so that i know exactly which quadrant it falls into 2.75 is in the fourth quadrant so it means in the fourth quadrant i'm expecting cos to be positive and sine to be negative so therefore i regard that answer as correct please check as well and then we do some exercises we express in polar and rectangular form all these um, given complex numbers and also moving backwards from polar and rectangular form to exponential form for number two.